Welcome to the first official Scholastic Book Fest. I'm Lizette Serrano. And I'm Michael Strauss. We are joining you live from Scholastic's World Headquarters in New York City, a place that celebrates the joy of reading and the power of stories to connect us. Uh, Eric Litwin is the number one New York Times best-selling author of Pete the Cat and Groovy Joe. So let's get ready to move. Let's get ready to sing along as he shares how books and music bring us together. And now, let's give a warm welcome to Eric Litwin. Hi, Eric. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you. Where are you joining us from today? Uh, I live in Washington, D.C., so I'm joining you from uh, the Capitol. Not too far from New York. All right, well, take it away, Eric. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am so happy to be here with you. My name is Eric Litwin, and as you heard in the introduction, I wrote the original four, the first four Pete the Cat books. I'm also the author of Groovy Joe, and also uh, author of a series called The Nut Family, whoop, <laughs> opposite side. And for teachers and parents out there interested in how our children learn to read, I have a professional development book with Scholastic <laughs> called The Power of Joyful Reading. Let's get started. Who wants to have fun? You know what's amazing? It turns out that learning to read works better, is optimized when we're having a good time, when we're enjoying ourselves, when we're involved and moving. And this means we want our children to participate. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with Pete the Cat. I love my white shoes and I need to teach you the song. So everyone, let me teach you the hand moves in the song. So put your hands like this, and we're gonna say, I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Try that. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Now you're in charge of the movement because I am going to do something else with my hands, which is play the guitar. I have it right here. Check it out. This is my travel guitar. Um, I love to travel all over the country and the world a little bit too. And I give concerts and talk about reading for early childhood. Let's rock and roll. I'll play the guitar and sing. And you move. And this is gonna be this is gonna be better than a Bon Jovi concert. Here we go, ready? I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Let me hear you. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Pete the Cat. I love my white shoes. Written by Eric Litwin Art by James Dean. Pete the Cat was walking down the street. All right, everybody, let's start walking. So move your hands like this. Let's get, let's get moving. Pete the Cat was walking down the street wearing his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much. Let's go ahead and make a heart. Pete loved his white shoes so much. He sang this song. Do you remember the words? Here we go. I love my white shoes. 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 All right, now I'm going to make a funny sound on the guitar. A stepping sound. And I need you to make a face like you're very concerned about something like, like you just stepped in something disgusting. Here we go. And then we take our hands, we go, oh no. Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn Pete's shoes? Did you say red? You're right. How about in Espanol? Rojo. Did Pete cry? You say, goodness, no. Try that with me. Goodness, no. He kept walking along. Let's get walking. He kept walking along and singing his song. Now, it was white shoes. Now it's going to be, I love my red shoes. Let's do it. I love my red shoes. 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 Okay, look concerned. Put your hands like this, remember? Oh no! Pete 
stuffed in a large pile of blueberries. What color did it turn Pete's shoes? Blue. In Espanol, azul. Did Pete cry? You say, goodness, no. He kept walking along. All right, let's get walking. Let's walk with even more stride. He kept walking along and singing his song. Here we go. It was red. Now it is blue. Ready? I love my blue shoes. 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 Okay, we start with the concerned look. Now we say, oh, no. Oh, no. Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn Pete's shoes? Brown. In Espanol, cafe. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along. Yeah, let's get moving. He kept walking along and singing his song. Here we go. I love my brown shoes. 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 Okay, you know what to do. Oh, no. Pete stepped in a bucket of water. And all the brown. And all the blue and all the red were washed away. Let's make a washing motion. <gasps> what color were Pete's shoes again? Do you know? White. Blanco. But now they were wet. Pete has wet shoes. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. <clears throat> he kept walking along and singing his song. Here we go. I love my wet shoes. 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 You know what? The moral of Pete's story is no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song because it's all good. Clap your hands for yourselves. Hey, you know what I think is really cool about Pete the Cat? Pete stays positive, doesn't he? Pete has a great attitude. But one of the ways that Pete stays positive is he uses words to stay positive. Have you noticed that? He says things like, it's all good. And if asked, did Pete cry? He says, goodness, no. So, I think that means that we can use words to make ourselves feel better and make others feel better too. So here's a question for you. What words do you use to make yourself feel good and to make others feel good? What do you stay, say to stay positive? And you know what? You can put that in the chat right now. And I, I know that um, our friends at Scholastic are reading the chat and that if you put things in the chat, you could possibly win some prizes. And you know what? They'll also share some of your words with me and I can read them out loud. And I do, um, I do have some things coming in from the chat and this is so wonderful. And one person wants to ask why Pete's shoes don't turn purple. Oh my goodness. This is a great question because red and blue are purple, right? Well, the reason for that is because it was such a large pile of um, of blueberries. It was it was overwhelming. Now, I have had lots of people email me, including one person who told me that they bought a pair of white shoes and a big bucket of strawberries and a big bucket of blueberries, and they stuck the shoes in the strawberries, and they stuck the shoes in the blueberries, and they wanted me to know that it didn't actually turn purple or blue. It just stained it. And I just have one word for that person and anyone else. It's fiction. Fiction. It's a book of fiction. If you want it to be purple, make it purple. You can change it for when you tell it. I thought it was nice as blue, but wonderful question. So many. Ah, oh, 
um, oh, here's some positive words coming in. Believe in yourself. We can make a song out of that. How about something like, I believe in me. You believe in you. Or, oh, what else is coming in? Um, we can do anything. I love it. I love it. Guess what? I have another positive character. His name is Groovy Joe. Do you know Groovy Joe? I love him. Look, he hangs out with dinosaurs. He plays the guitar. What's not to love? And I want to do this book with you right now. Published by Scholastic. The artist is Tom Lichtenheld, and he is so brilliant, and his art is so fun. I'm going to show you some of these wonderful pictures, and let's do this one. Now, there is a song. So we get started. Groovy Joe, Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. Written by Eric Litwin, art by Tom Lichtenheld. And there is a song that goes, love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. I'll teach you the moves. Put your hands like this. We're going to go. We start on our lap. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. You ready to try it? I'll get my guitar. We're about to rock like the Bee Gees. Okay, here we go. Remember the words? Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Get ready. <laughs> Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. I think you got it. Let's begin. And I see these wonderful things coming in. Um chat someone said it's okay i love you another positive words oh keep trying you know what we can help ourselves stay positive can't we can't we using words groovy joe saw something yummy everybody make a face like you just saw something yummy groovy joe started rubbing his what word what word he saw something yummy he started rubbing his Tommy. Groovy Joe was living the dream. He had a spoon, take out a spoon, and a tub of, you know the word? Ice cream. And he sang this song. All right, here we go. Let's do this. We're about to rock like Bon Jovi, the Bee Gees, and Casey and the Sunshine Band. Ready? Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar. Uh-oh. Did you hear a roar? That's not what you want to hear when you're eating ice cream, is it? And look what happened. A little dinosaur stomped into the room. He glared at the ice cream. Everyone glare. He glared at the ice cream and took out a spoon. He put on a bib. Let's put on a bib. He pulled up a chair. Now, this is a tough situation for Joe to be in, isn't it? He has his ice cream, which he loves, and there's a dinosaur who wants some. So what does he do? He says, it's awesome to share. They'll share the ice cream. And now they both sang together. Here they are singing together. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. There are two now, dog and a dinosaur, so it's a little bit louder. Ready? Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! Oh no! Uh oh! Check this out. Oh dear! A big dinosaur burst into the room. He stared at the ice cream and took out a. Did you get it right? Spoon. He put on a bib. Everyone put on a bib. I love the, look how Tom drew the bib on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's probably realistic. I think that's what they look like. He put on a bib. He pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? What do you think? It's awesome to share. And now they all sang together. Ready? Let's do this. It's a little louder because there's three. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. What's going to happen? You guessed it. Want to roar with me? We're all going to roar. 
really loud together, okay? See if you can scare everybody near you. Here we go. Oh no, a huge dinosaur smashed into the room. She glared at the ice cream and took out a spoon. She put on a bib. She pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? You know, say it with me. It's awesome to share. And everyone sang together. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Is everything okay now? Get ready. Let's do it together. Ready? Roar! Even louder. Roar! Uh-oh, something went very wrong. Here we go. Let me grab this picture. Look. Oh, no. The top was empty. The ice cream is through, so the dinosaur glared at. Let's see if you can see this. You know who. Who are they glaring at? Joe. <laughs> What can Joe do? What do you think? What can he do? He's in a tough bind, isn't he? Here's what he does. He turns over the tub, and he made it a drum. And then Juvie Joe beats out a rum-tum-tum-tum. The dinosaurs laugh. They jumped out of their chairs. They started to dance. They jumped in the air, and then everybody said, it's awesome to share, and they all sang together. Let's see what that looks like, all the dinosaurs singing together. Let's see how the artist Tom depicted that. Look how he did it. Look at them dancing and singing together. Just beautiful, isn't it? Here we go, our final chorus. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. What does this story teach us? It's awesome to share. Everyone clap your hands for yourselves and for everyone around you. You can give them a little clap. You can bow. It's fun to sing together, isn't it? It's fun to add music. Um, to our, our, our books, isn't it? And you know what's amazing? It turns out that we learn more that way. Our children build their reading foundation through joyful and engaging reading experiences. And let me show you teachers who are watching and parents who are very interested in literacy. Here's a book I co-wrote with Dr. Gina Pepin. And in this book, we explore the amazing uh, the amazing research and ideas and, and, and actual activities you can do in the classroom and at home uh, to promote joyful and engaging reading experiences that help our children do a number of things. One, fall in love with reading, right? See themselves as readers, prepares them for reading instruction, successful reading instruction, and, and creates fun and emotional benefit. You know, it's so important right now, these joyful reading experiences for our young children that based on the advice of the American Academy of Pediatrics, many doctors now are prescribing reading for young children. I think it's a great prescription. I maybe have a minute left, maybe. So let me just end by saying, first of all, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Scholastic, for having me. Um, reading together with our young children is one of the most important things we can do. It helps them develop their full cognitive, social, emotional, and language potential. It is key for them to have a reading foundation, which they need for reading instruction when they hit first grade or so. And it's just fun to do, isn't it? With children, reading is different than adults. It's louder, it's more involved. There's music, there's movement and it's interactive. It's deeply, deeply human. So everyone have fun reading together. Read and be happy. Thank you.